In The Hunger Games, Candace Everdeen pulled out Nightlock Berries when she heard the Capitol decided to have either her or Peter die. This act, which ultimately got both her and Peter out of the arena alive, was widely viewed as the act that would ignite a rebellion in the districts. A rebellion so widespread and so pent up that it would grow into an army that overthrew the capital itself. But what if Katniss never poured out those berries at that crucial moment in the 74th Hunger Games? I am the Media Dance, and in this video, we'll explore what might have happened if Katniss never poured out those berries in the arena. Let's go to the moment where she originally pulls out those berries. At this point, there are three optional routes the story could go. 1. Katniss and Peter start out by doing nothing. 2. Katniss kills Peter. 3. Peter kills Katniss. Peter was in no condition to fight at that point, so 3 is off the table. Katniss, after investing so much effort into keeping Peter alive, would not, like, not likely attempt to kill him now. This leaves us with a scenario where Katniss and Peter simply refuse to kill each other. Seneca Crane will at this point be mulling his options. He needs to intervene such that one tribute will fall while the other survives, which at this point would be Katniss. He'll likely set his sights on the fire machines, which he used to push Katniss to the careers in the first place. Katniss will make an effort to avoid the flames, while Peter, in no condition to move around, will perish. Katniss will emerge from the arena the victor, and in this scenario, will not be under pressure to make out with Peter. However, it is very likely that she would still have ignited a rebellion in a similar manner. Her refusal to kill Peter, essentially on the capital's orders was still seen as an act of defiance. I don't believe that the quarter quell will play out the way it did in Catching Fire, so she would not be going back into the arena. With that said, the rebels from District 13 would have to take different steps to continue the rebellion, as Plutarch Heavensby would not have risen to head game maker, as Seneca Crane would still be in charge. Most likely, the rebels would make more of an effort to reach out to her, and push her to her, their cause. They might have an easier time too, given the trauma Katniss would have experienced at seeing Peter burn. So what I propose the rebels do, is plan their attack when the third quarter quell begins. Find a weak spot and... From then on, minus the Peter specific aspects, Mockingjay would play out in Pan Am, similarly to how it does in our version. Candace does propos, the districts rally. And the capital is conquered. Candace does not embark on her mission to kill Snow, as the hijacking episode does not occur. Now, even if Peter did not survive to participate in that showdown with Kato, it is likely that Katniss will inspire someone else to be rebellious during the Hunger Games. If she triumphs over the Kato, then that person will act more swiftly. Otherwise, that person will emerge later. Because Panem was essentially a bomb, the capital was so oppressive to the districts that Katniss herself observed that the hatred was so intense that there might not have been any going back. If Katniss didn't ignite the rebellion, eventually someone else would have. The capital was doomed regardless because no government could oppress and abuse its people perpetually. Such a system is not sustainable, fragile as President Hem Snow himself observed. But what do you guys think? 
Could Panem have lasted indefinitely if it won for Katniss? Or do you think it would have fallen in some other way? By order of President Snow, please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below.